in the early 80s, uh, I had uh, become interested in Morris dancing, uh, mainly because a, a number of my Toronto and London friends had uh, also started teams. Um, now, for those who don't know about Morris dancing, uh, Morris and, and, and the cousin dances, uh, Longsword and Rapper, are all forms of traditional performance dance um, whose origins are probably lost in the mists of time, but uh, are definitely originally associated with certain re regions of England and certain times of the year. Um, they're a kind of a ritual uh, performance dance, if you like. Uh, there are currently Morris and sword dancing teams all over the UK, North America, Australia, New Zealand, Hong Kong, all, all, uh, many other parts of the world, uh, various European countries. Uh, apparently one, one web source lists almost 200 Morris and sword dance teams just in North America. So if you've never seen it, uh, you must have been hiding under a, a table somewhere, I guess. Um, anyway, a few of us here in Ottawa um, who were already members of the old sod community uh, decided to start a team. And uh, in late uh, 1984, I believe it was, uh, we invited Alistair Brown uh, to lead a workshop for those interested. Um, he taught us a style of Morris uh, originally from uh, the village of Sherborne in the Cotswold region of England. And for a while, uh, we worked on that tradition. Um, in uh, 1985, I, I attended Pinewood's English Dance Camp in uh, Massachusetts, uh, run by the CDSS, Country Dance and Song Society of America, uh, where um, Paul Hanford uh, taught me, uh, taught classes in two distinct types of Morris. And I was quite taken with uh, Northwest Clog Morris, as it's called, and uh, on my return, suggested that maybe this style um, originating mostly in, in Lancashire and Cheshire in the industrial areas of, of England uh, would likely suit us. Um, this style uh, uses uh, wooden clogs uh, to make a lot of noise and um, I think the idea of dancing in clogs and making a lot of noise actually appealed particularly to the women on the team. I'm not quite sure why that is but um, anyway, we started working on, on a dance called the Lancaster Processional uh, that uh, Paul Hanford had taught me. And around that time, I'm not sure of the timeline exactly here, but an English couple, uh, Duncan Bruce and his wife Dee, arrived in town. And um, Dee had danced with a women's uh, Northwest Morris team in, in England. And, uh, and she taught us a couple of other dances. Uh, Duncan was a Melodian player and, and had danced Cotswold Morris in England. So they knew a little bit about uh, what we needed to know. Um, they became quite involved with the team, uh, quite central to the team really, but, uh, but they only spent uh, a fairly short time in Ottawa before moving on. And at some time uh, around then in the early days, uh, we invited a man called Trevor Owen uh, who was a, uh, a dancer and clog maker, still is a clog maker, and a, an authority on uh, Northwest Clog Morris uh, to teach us a workshop and uh, probably sell us some clogs too. I think he sold quite a few of us clogs. Um, the team gradually evolved and, and increased its repertoire with more traditional dances, uh, plus a few that, uh, that I had written. Uh, the latter uh, sort of became the basis for a more coherent and unique team style. We were invited to, uh, to Ailes, as they're called, Morris Dance Gatherings uh, in Toronto and London, um, plus the uh, prestigious Marlborough Morris Ale in Vermont, probably the, you know, the Morris, uh, uh, um, the Morris Center of, uh, of North America. Uh, where we were, I think, uh, the first mixed gender Morris team uh, to perform there. Um, taking a cue from those uh, events, we ran our own Morris gatherings here in Ottawa and uh, surrounding areas, uh, dancing in, in places like Carp, Pakenham, Ashton, Almont, Manatic, and also, of course, downtown uh, Gatineau and Ottawa. Um, and of course, we danced on uh, Warren Avenue, which is where Catherine and Gord and Tim and Marg uh, both live. And uh, Warren Avenue is kind of our, our home cul-de-sac, I guess you'd call it. Uh, 
teams joined us uh, at these events. We invited other teams and uh, they came in from, uh, particularly from Toronto and London, but also uh, from uh, the US uh, from time to time. Uh, the Hogsback Morris team was uh, at one point immortalized by Malik Karsh, uh, brother of the more famous Yusef Karsh, who um, photographed us dancing outside the National Gallery and uh, included us in uh, his wonderful book of photos of Ottawa and the National Capital Region. Um, our other claim to fame is that our dance kit uh, clogs, hankies, sticks, etc., uh, etc., et are all represented in the Museum of History collection of dance costumes, probably on a shelf in a very dark room somewhere. Um, over our, I think it's seven or so years of existence, uh, I think about 20 dancers and musicians uh, were members of Hogsback. Um, unfortunately, uh, after a significant number of our core dancers uh, simultaneously migrated out of town, uh, the team finally folded in January 1992. So that's basically a rundown of, uh, of Hogsback. Uh, and uh, I'll hand over now back to Marg uh, because uh, she has some words about another rather strange and wonderful offshoot of Old Sod, the Mummer's Play.